Hi guys, if it's Tuesday, it's Down and Dirty Woods Craft. Stay with me. Okay, today guys, we're going to talk a little bit about canteen cup cooking, or cooking in the field. Now, one of the things that affects us going to the field and being able to cook effectively is carrying the components and being able to properly measure them and properly cook them once we get there. Now, a lot of the dehydrated meals and things you have today, that's pretty straightforward and you ain't got to worry about it because it's just add water no big thing but what if you're gonna try to save a little money instead of getting those expensive um, MRE type or dehydrated meals in those cans and use some other component like you might have around the house like instant potatoes like the macaroni and cheeses like etc well, one of the things you need to be able to do is measure either ahead of time or measure at the place because I don't want to tote a whole big old huge family size bag if I'm only going to use one cup. So therefore, I want to be able to measure it and equal it out. Now, with our cooking container, whatever the container is that I'm going to be cooking with, I need to have a way of measuring. And a trick that I learned a long time ago was how to measure in a canteen cup. Now, on a canteen cup or whatever component you have, what you want to do is measure to what is one cup, okay? Because most cooking is broken down into a quarter cup, a half cup, one and a half cups, two cups, etc. So if I have a one cup mark, just a single mark that equals one cup, I can eyeball it from there. Half of that distance is a half a cup, three quarters up to it, three quarters of a cup. Three of them is three cups. So I need the one cup measurement. So whatever type of cup you're going to be using, or cooking vessel, let's say. Now these Stanleys already have marked, but let's assume they don't. And let's assume that you have a small round vessel, and you want to put a mark on it. Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to take and you want to measure the liquid into it. So I, at home, at the sink, take my wife's measuring cup and I come up with one cup and I pour it into the pot. I then will take a tape measure and I will go down from the top here on the edge until I touch the top of the water level. Now we're going to imagine for this that say it's four inches down. I then know that I can come out here on the outside of the pot, measure down to four inches and mark on the outside of the pot or mark on the inside of the pot, depending. Now, what are you going to mark on the steel with? I need something that's harder than steel that's going to cut steel. They make these scribe pencils that you can get at the hardware store for marking your tools. They work really good, but if you're down and dirty, a file. That point on the tip of a file is hardened and is harder than steel and will scratch steel. And most of them have a sharp corner or a sharp point of some point that will allow you to do it. So I'm going to measure down here on the side on the outside. I'm going to take it and bear down and I'm going to scratch forward and back along a line. If you want to make it kind of neat, put a piece of like cardboard or duct tape right there as a guide and scratch back and forth on it until you can see it. Likewise on the inside, I'm going to come down to the measurement on the inside and scratch back and forth until I have it. Leaving the water in it, I come up here right at water level and just scratch on the inside. That will give me a one cup measurement and therefore I can speed up my measuring. So when I get there, I know that this, well, we're gonna cover this a little more in a future episode where I'm gonna show you how to take the big bulk and divide it down into small portions and make kind of like your own MREs. Something to carry along that I can make in the field. 
But for let's say for the moment, one of my favorites is mac is uh, chili mac. And what I do is I take the elbow macaroni noodles like you would get in uh, uh, macaroni and cheese. And I take instant chili, which I buy at Walmart at the uh, soup counter area called Darn Good Chili. I showed that in a previous episode. And I measure out how much I want of the noodles, okay? And I put that into a sealed up bag. And on the outside of the bag, I'll write roughly how much water it takes, like two cups of water. I then take my pot and I measure it in for two cups. Since I only have a one cup measurement down here, Double that distance up would be two cups. I ain't even got a, you know. So if one cup's there, well, two cups must be there. I bring that to the boil. I put in my noodles and I let them boil till they're tender. Then I'm going to drain off the water into my sauce pack or whatever. In this case, into where the chili is. In, the chili just has to be rehydrated. So I have a one quart freezer bag that has the dried chili in it. And it says add, let us say, a cup of water. Well, there's my measurement. I pour water, pour water, pour water, half cup of water in, seal it up, and let it start rehydrating while I'm boiling this. Once this becomes done and ready, I add the two together, stir it up inside the quart bag, dump my water out of this, slide the quart bag in here, open it up, and eat it out of the bag. I still got a clean pot. And the only thing I got to get rid of is... I gotta clean the utensil, and I gotta get rid of the bag, which can be put into a fire. Simple little tricks, but it's all based on the mindset of knowing how much measuring ahead of time. By marking my pot with a one cup marker, if it's a tall one, I'll go ahead and mark a second cup, and that way I can tell how far up. Now, unlike my canteen cup, I marked back here on the back because that front face is going to be facing the fire and it's going to get suited up pretty bad. So back here on the side next to the handle, that's where I put my marks for one cup and etc. And I have calculated out that at the bottom of this fold where the handle attaches, that's one cup. And at the top of the handle is two cups. So I know that's a one cup, two cup in this cup. And I've got it quickly measured. And there's a little tip. If you got these small round cooking pots, this is a uh, insulated cup that William Collins sent me. You can pick these up at Walmart. And in fact, I haven't even taken the label off of it yet. But it's a small round coffee cup with a snap-on lid, and it's a Yeti type thing. I bet you didn't know that that'll fit into them. And that means I got a cup that I can keep hot coffee, hot soup, whatever on a cold day in there to have something to cook and go with. I can make two full cups of coffee in this, have one cup in my drinking cup, and it don't lose heat fast, and then have this or pour soup into it or whatever. Those little thermos cups, Yeti type cups, are very handy in the field for a quick heat, because remember I was saying I was gonna keep my noodles, right? I transfer my noodles into here. They'll stay warm while I'm cooking the chili. Simple little trick. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please leave any questions in the comments below. And if you have any questions or something you want to see on a, a future episode, please let me know about it. Till next time, I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.